It's time now for Media Watch, and I'm joined now by Diptika Laurent. Hi there, Diptika. Hi, um, Let's start with the latest from the French presidential elections, because for the Conservative uh, candidate, François Fillon, just when you thought things couldn't get any worse, well, suddenly they do exactly that. <laughs> People just keep jumping ship, Tom. A, a ship, some might say, is sinking. Uh, the latest unconfirmed report from the French media say the latest person is Fillon's campaign director, Patrick Stefanini. He wrote a letter to Fillon, but it's unclear whether that letter has been made official, that letter of resignation. We do know that Thierry Soler, who was his spokesman and the man who essentially got him elected in the primaries last year, he has uh, resigned. He, put, he posted on Twitter saying he's decided to uh, stop being part of the campaign. Uh, and other uh, people, including Fillon's political advisor, Dominique Brussero, also announced he's quitting. Uh, Liberation, the French newspaper, has a, a counter, a count of the number of people who keep jumping ship, which is up to uh, 107, as you can see here, but it, it just keeps been rising all evening. Uh, Fion's obstinance has, of course, been fodder for the French political cartoonists. Let's just look at a few of them. This one here uh, from Bidou, uh, where Fion says, In my camp, we were close like the fingers in a, in a hand. Uh, I only have five supporters left, essentially. And this cartoonist here says, has likened Fion's situation to The Walking Dead. Those two men in the background saying, Good God, he's still alive. Uh, so you're seeing a lot of reactions from the cartoonists as well. OK, um, some sexist comments now moving on to another story by the po a Polish MEP at the European Parliament has triggered a lot of debate online. I've seen lots of things posted on, on social media, a lot of backlash. A, a huge backlash that started from his comments itself on Wednesday. His name is Janusz Korwin Mika. He's a 74 year old Polish lawmaker and member of the European Parliament. And during a debate on Wednesday on the gender pay gap, out of all things, he made the following comments that I'll show you in a second. And it provoked a pretty nice smackdown from a Spanish M M MEP in a video that's been viewed over 2 million times on Facebook. Let's take a listen. And of course, women must earn less than men because they are weaker, they are smaller, they are less intelligent, and they must earn less. That's all. Garcia <laughs> Pérez. Mire, señor diputado, según usted. Según sus teorías, yo no tendría derecho de estar aquí como diputada. Y sé que le duele, sé que le duele y le preocupa que hoy las mujeres podamos estar representando a los ciudadanos en igualdad de condiciones con usted. Yo aquí vengo a defender a las mujeres europeas de hombres como usted. There you go. <laughs> uh, Cohen Micke, just to give you a bit of context, he's the head of his own party in Poland, a far-right party called the Corwin Party. He was actually kicked out of a fringe group there uh, a few years ago for having apparently having a child out of wedlock. And he's a man who's no stranger to controversy. He made disparaging comments about people of color. And he's a man that Nigel Farage has said makes him look moderate. So I think that's speaking volumes. Now, uh, this Polish MP showed no signs of backing down. On Twitter, he posted this. Yes, it is the 21st century. It is time to get rid of the 20th century stereotypes that women are equal to men. So he's certainly showing, he's certainly sticking by his comments despite the criticism. Now, there's been a lot of love for that Spanish MP as well. Her name is Iratze Garcia Perez. This user says, you're my hero for standing up to sexism. Uh, and finally, uh, Prue Magoo, at Prue Magoo, says it's amazing how Cohen Mika managed to find two women to marry him and notes that he actually has three daughters. So I guess a statement on how much of a role model he's appearing to be. Finally, Tom, just on this, BuzzFeed uh, does give us some hope that there is justice in the world because the European Parliament has uh, opened an investigation into his comments. OK, all right. So he might be landing himself in some... More hot water for making those remarks. Um, a story we've been covering in the main body of the news, tensions rising between Ankara and Berlin. And it appears that the, uh, uh, the, the, the leaders of those two countries are set to hold uh, some dialogue over the next few days. Of course, at stake, there's this issue of uh, the Turks rallying on, Turkish, on German soil and then a German 
journalist who's jailed in, in Turkey. So a lot lot's going on in that relationship. That's right. Uh, a lot of tensions, uh, t- rising tensions between Germany and Turkey. And it actually comes uh, as a controversial biopic uh, about President Turkish President Erdogan comes out this Friday. That biopic is called Reis, it, which roughly translates to the chief, and many see it as a propagandist video. It hits cinemas this Friday, chronicling Erdogan's childhood uh, in a tough Istanbul neighborhood and his rise to mayor of Istanbul. Let's take a listen to that trailer. That film, as I said, many people seeing it as a propagandist film. It was meant to be released on February the 26th, which coincides with Erdogan's birthday. Now, uh, it wasn't the case because films typically come out on Fridays in Turkey, hence the reason it was pushed back. Interestingly, the film was actually shot in Cyprus and not Turkey, which is quite baffling considering it's a film about the Turkish leader himself. Uh, Die Welt, the German newspaper, says... This film is above all an explanation and justification of the patriarchy from which Erdogan comes and to where he's obviously going back. Uh, And just finally, Tom, on this, it doesn't look like it's a film that'll be getting any awards, not even an accidental Oscar. Uh, IMDb, the movie database, has ranked it as the third worst film on record, coming well behind B-grade films like Super Babies 2 and Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. Santa Claus conquers the Martians is one I haven't seen, so I'll have to look out for that. <laughs> Thank you so much for that Dipti Calorum with today's edition of Media Watch.